The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Just as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger before you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one calling out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea was going out to him, and all the people of Jerusalem, and they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist, and his diet was locusts and wild honey. And he was preaching, saying, After me one is coming who is mightier than I, and I am not fit to bend down and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. 10 And immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opening, and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit asterisk brought him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild animals, and the angels were serving him. Now after John was taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God, 15 and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe in the gospel. As he was going along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will have you become fishers of people. 18 Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were also in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and went away to follow him. They asterisk went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and began to teach. And they were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, Twenty-four saying, What business do you have with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet, and come out of him. After throwing him into convulsions and crying out with a loud voice, the unclean spirit came out of him. And they were all amazed, so they debated among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. 28 Immediately the news about him spread everywhere into all the surrounding region of Galilee. And immediately after they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever, and they immediately asterisk spoke to Jesus about her. And he came to her and raised her up, taking her by the hand, and the fever left her, and she served them. Now when evening came, after the sun had set, they began bringing to him all who were ill and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city had gathered at the door. And he healed many who were ill with various diseases, and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew who he was. And in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place, and prayed there for a time. Simon and his companions eagerly searched for him. And they found him and asterisk said to him, Everyone is looking for you. 
He asterisk said to them, Let's go somewhere else to the towns nearby, so that I may also preach there, for this is why I came. And he went into their synagogues preaching throughout Galilee, and casting out the demons. And a man with leprosy asterisk came to Jesus, imploring him and kneeling down, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out with his hand and touched him, and asterisk said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. And he sternly warned him and immediately sent him away. And he asterisk said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the news around, to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter a city, but stayed out in unpopulated areas, and they were coming to him from everywhere. When Jesus came back to Capernaum a few days later, it was heard that he was at home. And many were gathered together, so that there was no longer space, not even near the door, and he was speaking the word to them. And some people asterisk came, bringing to him a man who was paralyzed, carried by four men. And when they were unable to get to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after digging an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralyzed man was lying. And Jesus, seeing their faith, asterisk said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the scribes were sitting there and thinking it over in their hearts. Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins except God alone? Immediately Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were thinking that way within themselves, asterisk said to them, Why are you thinking about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, and pick up your pallet and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he asterisk said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, Get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. And he got up and immediately picked up the pallet and went out in the sight of everyone, so that they were all amazed and were glorifying God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. And he went out again by the seashore, and all the people were coming to him, and he was teaching them. As he passed by, he saw Levi the son of Alphaeus sitting in the tax office, and he asterisk said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And it asterisk happened that he was reclining at the table in his house, and many tax collectors and sinners were dining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many of them, and they were following him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, Why is he eating with tax collectors and sinners? And hearing this, Jesus asterisk said to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and they asterisk came and asterisk said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, While the groom is with them, the attendants of the groom cannot fast, can they? As long as they have the groom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the groom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, otherwise, the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear results. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost and the skins as well, but one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. 
And it happened that he was passing through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples began to make their way along while picking the heads of grain. The Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he asterisk said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and he and his companions became hungry? How he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar the high priest, and ate the consecrated bread, which is not lawful for anyone to eat except the priests, and he also gave it to those who were with him. Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. He entered a synagogue again, and a man was there whose hand was withered. And they were watching him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. He asterisk said to the man with the withered hand, Get up and come forward. And he asterisk said to them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or to do harm, to save a life or to kill? But they kept silent. Five after looking around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, he asterisk said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately began conspiring with the Herodians against him, as to how they might put him to death. Jesus withdrew to the sea with his disciples, and a large multitude from Galilee followed, and also from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and beyond the Jordan, and the vicinity of Tyre and Sidon, a great number of people heard about everything that he was doing and came to him. And he told his disciples to see that a boat would be ready for him because of the masses, so that they would not crowd him. For he had healed many, with the result that all those who had diseases pushed in around him in order to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they would fall down before him and shout, You are the Son of God. 12 And he strongly warned them not to reveal who he was. And he asterisk went up on the mountain and asterisk summoned those whom he himself wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, so that they would be with him and that he could send them out to preach. And to have authority to cast out the demons. And he appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter. James the son of Zebedee and John the brother of James, to them he gave the name Boanerges, which means, sons of thunder. And Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, and Simon the Zealot. And Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. And he asterisk came home, and the crowd asterisk gathered again, to such an extent that they could not even eat a meal. And when his own people heard about this, they came out to take custody of him, for they were saying, He has lost his senses. The scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and he casts out the demons by the ruler of the demons. And so he called them to himself and began speaking to them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, both is finished. But no one can enter the strong man's house and plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons and daughters of men, and whatever blasphemies they commit. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. Because they were saying, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brother's asterisk came, and while standing outside they sent word to him, calling for him. And a crowd was sitting around him, 
And the asterisk said to him, Behold, your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you. Answering them, he asterisk said, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those who were sitting around him, he asterisk said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, this is my brother, and sister, and mother. Again he began to teach by the sea. And such a very large crowd gathered to him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat down, and the whole crowd was by the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables, and was saying to them in his teaching, Listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow. As he was sowing, some seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. And when the sun had risen, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Other seeds fell into the good soil, and as they grew up and increased, they yielded a crop and produced thirty, sixty, and a hundred times as much. And he was saying, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. As soon as he was alone, his followers, along with the twelve disciples, began asking him about the parables. And he was saying to them, To you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God, but for those who are outside, everything comes in parables. So that while seeing they may see, and not perceive, and while hearing, they may hear, and not understand, otherwise they might return and it would be forgiven them. And he asterisk said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones who are beside the road where the word is sown, and when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word which has been sown in them. And in a similar way these are the ones sown with seed on the rocky places, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And yet they have no firm root in themselves, but are only temporary, then, when affliction or persecution occurs because of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown with seed among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard the word. But the worries of the world, and the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things enter and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And those are the ones sown with seed on the good soil, and they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty, sixty, and a hundred times as much. And he was saying to them, A lamp is not brought to be put under a basket, or under a bed, is it? Is it not brought to be put on the lampstand? For nothing is hidden, except to be revealed, nor has anything been secret, but that it would come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he was saying to them, Take care what you listen to. Be why your standard of measure it will be measured to you, and more will be given you besides. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And he was saying, The kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. And he goes to bed at night and gets up daily, and the seed sprouts and grows, how, he himself does not know. The soil produces crops by itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. Now when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he was saying, How shall we picture the kingdom of God, or by what parable shall we present it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the soil, though it is the smallest of all the seeds that are upon the soil, 
Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants, and forms large branches, with the result that the birds of the sky can nest under its shade. And with many such parables he was speaking the word to them, so far as they were able to understand it. And he did not speak to them without a parable, but he was explaining everything privately to his own disciples. On that day, when evening came, he asterisk said to them, Let's go over to the other side. After dismissing the crowd, they asterisk took him along with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a fierce gale of wind asterisk developed, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling with water. And yet Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they asterisk woke him and asterisk said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They became very much afraid and said to one another, Who, then, is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? They came to the other side of the sea, into the region of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one was able to bind him anymore, not even with a chain. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains, and cutting himself with stones. Sick seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. And shouting with a loud voice, he asterisk said, What business do you have with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had already been saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, What is your name? And he asterisk said to him, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the region. Now there was a large herd of pigs feeding nearby on the mountain. And the demons begged him, saying, Send us into the pigs so that we may enter them. Jesus gave them permission. And coming out, the unclean spirits entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, about two thousand of them, and they were drowned in the sea. Their herdsmen ran away and reported it in the city and in the countryside. And the people came to see what it was that had happened. And then they asterisk came to Jesus and asterisk saw the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had previously had the legion, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it described to them how it had happened to the demon-possessed man, and all about the pigs. And they began to beg him to leave their region. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed was begging him that he might accompany him. And he did not let him, but he asterisk said to him, Go home to your people and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you, and how he had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. When Jesus had crossed over again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed by the seashore. And one of the synagogue officials, named Jairus, asterisk came, and upon seeing him, asterisk fell at his feet. And asterisk pleaded with him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death, please come and lay your hands on her, so that she will get well and live. And he went off with him, and a large crowd was following him and pressing in on him. 
a woman who had had a hemorrhage for twelve years, and had endured much at the hands of many physicians, and had spent all that she had and was not helped at all, but instead had become worse. After hearing about Jesus, she came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak. For she had been saying to herself, If I just touch his garments, I will get well. 29 And immediately the flow of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And immediately Jesus, perceiving in himself that power from him had gone out, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garments. And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see the woman who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace and be cured of your disease. While he was still speaking, people asterisk came from the house of the synagogue official, saying, Your daughter has died, why bother the teacher further? But Jesus, overhearing what was being spoken, asterisk said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, only believe. And he allowed no one to accompany him except Peter, James, and John the brother of James. They asterisk came to the house of the synagogue official, and he asterisk saw a commotion, and people loudly weeping and wailing. And after entering, he asterisk said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child has not died, but is asleep. And they began laughing at him. But putting them all outside, he asterisk took along the child's father and mother and his own companions, and asterisk entered the room where the child was in bed. And taking the child by the hand, he asterisk said to her, Talitha, come. Which translated means, little girl, I say to you, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk, for she was twelve years old. And immediately they were completely astonished. And he gave them strict orders that no one was to know about this, and he told them to have something given her to eat. Jesus went out from there and asterisk came into his hometown, and his disciples asterisk followed him. Two and when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and the many listeners were astonished, saying, Where did this man learn these things, and what is this wisdom that has been given to him? and such miracles as these performed by his hands. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James, Hoses, Judas, and Simon? And are his sisters not here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not dishonored except in his hometown and among his own relatives, and in his own household. And he could not do any miracle there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. And he was going around the villages, teaching. And he asterisk summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them that they were to take nothing for their journey, except a mere staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt, nine but to wear sandals, and he added, Do not wear two tunics. And he said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave town. Any place that does not receive you or listen to you, as you go out from there, shake the dust off the soles of your feet as a testimony against them. And they went out and preached that people are to repent. And they were casting out many demons and were anointing with oil many sick people and healing them. And King Herod heard about it, for his name had become well known, and people were saying, John the Baptist has risen from the dead, and that is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others were saying, He is Elijah. 
And others were saying, He is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard about it, he kept saying, John, whom I beheaded, has risen. For Herod himself had sent men and had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias held a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, and could not do so. For Herod was afraid of John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he had been protecting him. And when he heard him, he was very perplexed, and yet he used to enjoy listening to him. An opportune day came when Herod, on his birthday, held a banquet for his nobles and military commanders, and the leading people of Galilee. And when the daughter of Herodias herself came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you want, and I will give it to you. And he swore to her, Whatever you ask of me, I will give it to you, up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately she came in a hurry to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And although the king was very sorry, because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he was unwilling to refuse her. Immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded him to bring back his head. And he went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about this, they came and carried away his body, and laid it in a tomb. The apostles Asterisk gathered together with Jesus, and they reported to him all that they had done and taught. And he Asterisk said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a little while. For there were many people coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. And they went away in the boat to a secluded place by themselves. The people saw them going, and many recognized them and ran there together on foot from all the cities, and got there ahead of them. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And when it was already late, his disciples came up to him and said, This place is secluded and it is already late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they asterisk said to him, Shall we go and spend two hundred denarii on bread, and give it to them to eat? But he asterisk said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go look. And when they found out, they asterisk said, five, and two fish. And he ordered them all to recline by groups on the green grass. They reclined in groups of hundreds and fifties. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food and broke the loaves and he gave them to the disciples again and again to set before them, and he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up twelve full baskets of the broken pieces of bread, and of the fish. There were five thousand men who ate the loaves. And immediately Jesus had his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he himself asterisk dismissed the crowd. And after saying goodbye to them, he left for the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Forty-eight seeing them straining at the oars, for the wind was against them, at about the fourth watch of the night, he asterisk came to them, walking on the sea, and he intended to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, 
they thought that it was a ghost, and they cried out, Fifty for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke with them and asterisk said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind stopped, and they were utterly astonished, fifty-two for they had not gained any insight from the incident of the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over they came to land at Genesaret, and moored at the shore. And when they got out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him. And ran about that entire country and began carrying here and there on their pallets those who were sick, to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he entered villages, or cities, or a countryside, they were laying the sick in the marketplaces and imploring him that they might just touch the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were being healed. The Pharisees and some of the scribes asterisk gathered to him after they came from Jerusalem, and saw that some of his disciples were eating their bread with unholy hands, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the other Jews do not eat unless they carefully wash their hands, thereby holding firmly to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they completely cleanse themselves, and there are many other things which they have received as traditions to firmly hold, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and copper pots. And the Pharisees and the scribes asterisk asked him, why do your disciples not walk in accordance with the tradition of the elders, but eat their bread with unholy hands? But he said to them, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. He was also saying to them, You are experts at setting aside the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and, the one who speaks evil of father or mother, is certainly to be put to death. But you say, If a person says to his father or his mother, Whatever I have that would help you is korban, that is, given to God. You no longer allow him to do anything for his father or his mother. Thereby invalidating the word of God by your tradition which you have handed down, and you do many things such as that. After he called the crowd to him again, he began saying to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside the person which can defile him if it goes into him, but the things which come out of the person are what defile the person. And when he later entered a house, away from the crowd, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he asterisk said to them, Are you so lacking in understanding as well? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the person from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not go into his heart, but into his stomach, and is eliminated? Thereby he declared all foods clean. And he was saying, that which comes out of the person, that is what defiles the person. For from within, out of the hearts of people, come the evil thoughts, acts of sexual immorality, thefts, murders, acts of adultery. Deeds of greed, wickedness, deceit, indecent behavior, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the person. Now Jesus got up and went from there to the region of Tyre. And when he had entered a house, he wanted no one to know about it, and yet he could not escape notice. But after hearing about him, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately came and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, of Syrophoenician descent. And she repeatedly asked him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he was saying to her, Let the children be satisfied first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. 
But she answered and asterisk said to him, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table feed on the children's crumbs. And he said to her, Because of this answer, Go, the demon has gone out of your daughter. And after going back to her home, she found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Again he left the region of Tyre and came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, within the region of Decapolis. And they asterisk brought to him one who was deaf and had difficulty speaking, and they asterisk begged him to lay his hand on him. And Jesus took him aside from the crowd, by himself, and put his fingers in his ears, and after spitting, he touched his tongue with the saliva. And looking up to heaven with a deep sigh, he asterisk said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was removed, and he began speaking plainly. And he gave them orders not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. And they were utterly astonished, saying, He has done all things well, he makes even those who are deaf hear, and those who are unable to talk, speak. In those days, when there was again a large crowd and they had nothing to eat, Jesus summoned his disciples and asterisk said to them, I feel compassion for the people because they have remained with me for three days already and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come from a great distance. And his disciples replied to him, Where will anyone be able to find enough bread here in this desolate place to satisfy these people? And he was asking them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. And he asterisk directed the people to recline on the ground, and taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks and broke them, and started giving them to his disciples to serve, and they served them to the people. They also had a few small fish, and after he had blessed them, he told the disciples to serve these as well. And they ate and were satisfied, and they picked up seven large baskets full of what was left over of the broken pieces. About four thousand men were there, and he dismissed them. And immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmanutha. And the Pharisees came out and began to argue with him, demanding from him a sign from heaven, to test him. Sighing deeply in his spirit, he asterisk said, Why does this generation demand a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. And leaving them, he again embarked and went away to the other side. And the disciples had forgotten to take bread, and did not have more than one loaf in the boat with them. And he was giving orders to them, saying, Watch out! Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and the leaven of Herod. And they began to discuss with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, asterisk said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet comprehend or understand? Do you still have your heart hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces you picked up? They asterisk said to him, Twelve. When I broke the seven for the four thousand, how many large baskets full of broken pieces did you pick up? And they asterisk said to him, Seven. And he was saying to them, Do you not yet understand? And they asterisk came to Bethsaida. And some people asterisk brought a man who was blind to Jesus and asterisk begged him to touch him. Taking the man who was blind by the hand, he brought him out of the village, and after spitting in his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, for I see them like trees, walking around. 
Then again he laid his hands on his eyes, and he looked intently and was restored, and began to see everything clearly. And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. Jesus went out, along with his disciples, to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he questioned his disciples, saying to them, Who do people say that I am? They told him, saying, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he continued questioning them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and asterisk said to him, You are the Christ. And he warned them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise from the dead. And he was stating the matter plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. 33 But turning around and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and asterisk said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on God's purposes, but on man's. And he summoned the crowd together with his disciples, and said to them, If anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it benefit a person to gain the whole world, and forfeit his soul? For what could a person give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And Jesus was saying to them, Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God when it has come with power. And six days later Jesus asterisk took with him Peter, James, and John, and asterisk brought them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his garments became radiant and exceedingly white, as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter responded and asterisk said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here, let's make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know how to reply, for they became terrified. Then a cloud formed, overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly they looked around and saw no one with them anymore, except Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, he gave them orders not to relate to anyone what they had seen, until the Son of Man rose from the dead. They seized upon that statement, discussing with one another what rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, saying, why is it that the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he said to them, Elijah does come first and he restores all things. And yet how is it written of the Son of Man that he will suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I say to you that Elijah has indeed come, and they did to him whatever they wanted, just as it is written of him. And when they came back to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and some scribes arguing with them. Immediately, when the entire crowd saw him, they were amazed and began running up to greet him. And he asked them, What are you disputing with them? And one person from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you my son, because he has a spirit that makes him unable to speak. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground, and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes stiff. And I told your disciples so that they would cast it out, but they could not do it. And he answered them and asterisk said, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? 
Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When he saw him, the spirit immediately threw him into convulsions, and falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. It has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. But Jesus said to him, If you can. All things are possible for the one who believes. Immediately the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. And after crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out, and the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him, and he got up. When he came into the house, his disciples began asking him privately, Why is it that we could not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot come out by anything except prayer. And from there they went out and began to go through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know about it. For he was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him, and when he has been killed, he will rise three days later. But they did not understand this statement, and they were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he began to question them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had discussed with one another which of them was the greatest. And sitting down, he called the twelve and asterisk said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and placed him among them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives own child like this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me does not receive me, but him who sent me. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not hinder him, for there is no one who will perform a miracle in my name, and be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because of your name as followers of Christ, truly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it is better for him if a heavy millstone is hung around his neck and he is thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off, it is better for you to enter life maimed, than, having your two hands, to go into hell, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot is causing you to sin, cut it off, it is better for you to enter life without a foot, than, having your two feet, to be thrown into hell. And if your eye is causing you to sin, throw it away, it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye, than, having two eyes, to be thrown into hell. Where their worm does not die, and the fire is not extinguished. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt becomes unsalty, with what will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves, and be at peace with one another. Setting out from there, Jesus Asterisk went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan, crowds Asterisk gathered to him again, and, as he was accustomed, he once more began to teach them. And some Pharisees came up to Jesus, testing him, and began questioning him whether it was lawful for a man to divorce his wife. And he answered and said to them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send his wife away. But Jesus said to them, 
because of your hardness of heart he wrote you this commandment. 6 But from the beginning of creation, God created them male and female. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother. And the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no person is to separate. And in the house the disciples again began questioning him about this. And he asterisk said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she herself divorces her husband and marries another man, she is committing adultery. And they were bringing children to him so that he would touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Allow the children to come to me, do not forbid them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. And he took them in his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands on them. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do so that I may inherit eternal life? But Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth. Looking at him, Jesus showed love to him and said to him, One thing you lack, go and sell all you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But he was deeply dismayed by these words, and he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. And Jesus, looking around, asterisk said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus responded again and asterisk said to them, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were even more astonished, and said to him, Then who can be saved? Looking at them, Jesus asterisk said, With people it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, Behold, we have left everything and have followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or farms, for my sake and for the gospel's sake but that he will receive a hundred times as much now in the present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and farms, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last, first. Now they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking on ahead of them, and they were amazed, and those who followed were fearful. And again he took the twelve aside and began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Saying, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him, and flog him and kill him, and three days later he will rise from the dead. James and John the two sons of Zebedee, asterisk came up to Jesus, saying to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant that we may sit, one on your right and one on your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. They said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, 
The cup that I drink you shall drink, and you shall be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. But to sit on my right or on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. Hearing this, the other ten began to feel indignant with James and John. Calling them to himself, Jesus Asterisk said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles domineer over them, and their people in high position exercise authority over them. But it is not this way among you, rather, whoever wants to become prominent among you shall be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Then they asterisk came to Jericho. And later, as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a beggar who was blind named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. 47 And when he heard that it was Jesus the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they asterisk called the man who was blind, saying to him, Take courage, stand up. He is calling for you. And throwing off his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And replying to him, Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? And the man who was blind said to him, Rabboni, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and began following him on the road. And as they asterisk approached Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he asterisk sent two of his disciples. And asterisk said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it you will find a colt tied there, on which no one has ever sat, untie it and bring it here. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this, say, The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it back here. They went away and found a colt tied at the door, outside in the street, and they asterisk untied it. And some of the bystanders were saying to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? And they told them just as Jesus had said, and they gave them permission. They asterisk brought the colt to Jesus and asterisk put their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches which they had cut from the fields. And those who went in front and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest! And Jesus entered Jerusalem and came into the temple area, and after looking around at everything, he left for Bethany with the twelve, since it was already late. On the next day, when they had left Bethany, he became hungry. Seeing from a distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if perhaps he would find anything on it, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples were listening. Then they asterisk came to Jerusalem. And he entered the temple area and began to drive out those who were selling and buying on the temple grounds, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple grounds. And he began to teach and say to them, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the scribes heard this, and they began seeking how to put him to death, for they were afraid of him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. 
and whenever evening came, they would leave the city. As they were passing by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots up. 21 And being reminded, Peter Asterisk said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. 22 And Jesus answered and Asterisk said to them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted to him. Therefore, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them, and they will be granted to you. And whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you for your offenses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive your offenses. And they asterisk came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple area, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders asterisk came to him. And began saying to him, By what authority are you doing these things, or who gave you this authority to do these things? But Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question, and you answer me, and then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was the baptism of John from heaven, or from men? Answer me. And they began considering the implications among themselves, saying, If we say, From heaven, he will say, Then why did you not believe him? But should we say, From men? They were afraid of the people, for they all considered John to have been a real prophet. Answering Jesus, they asterisk said, We do not know. And Jesus asterisk said to them, Neither am I telling you by what authority I do these things. And he began to speak to them in parables, A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it, and dug a vat under the winepress and built a tower, and leased it to vine growers and went on a journey. And at the harvest time he sent a slave to the vine growers, in order to receive his share of the produce of the vineyard from the vine growers. And they took him, and beat him, and sent him away empty handed. And again he sent them another slave, and they wounded him in the head, and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and that one they killed, and so with many others, beating some and killing others. He had one more man to send, a beloved son, he sent him to them last of all, saying, They will respect my son. But those vine growers said to one another, This is the heir, come, let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and put the vine growers to death, and give the vineyard to others. Have you not even read this scripture, a stone which the builders rejected, this has become the chief cornerstone. This came about from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they were seeking to seize him, and yet they feared the people, for they understood that he told the parable against them. And so they left him and went away. Then they asterisk sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to him in order to trap him in a statement. They came and asterisk said to him, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and do not care what anyone thinks, for you are not partial to anyone, but you teach the way of God in truth. Is it permissible to pay a poll tax to Caesar, or not? Are we to pay, or not pay? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me Adenarius to look at. And they brought one. And he asterisk said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus said to them, Pay to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. Some Sadducees, who say that there is no resurrection, 
Asterisk came to Jesus, and began questioning him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves behind a wife and does not leave a child, his brother is to marry the wife and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers, and the first took a wife, and died leaving no children. The second one married her, and died leaving behind no children, and the third likewise. And so the seven together left no children. Last of all the woman also died. In the resurrection, which one's wife will she be? For each of the seven had her as his wife. Jesus said to them, Is this not the reason you are mistaken, that you do not understand the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But regarding the fact that the dead rise, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the burning bush, how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, you are greatly mistaken. One of the scribes came up and heard them arguing, and recognizing that he had answered them well, asked him, What commandment is the foremost of all? Jesus answered, The foremost is, Hear, Israel. The Lord is our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, Well said, Teacher, you have truly stated that he is one, and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered intelligently, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And then, no one dared any longer to question him. And Jesus responded and began saying, As he taught in the temple area, How is it that the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself sighed in the Holy Spirit, The Lord said to my Lord, S.I.T. at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord, so in what sense is he his son? And the large crowd enjoyed listening to him. And in his teaching he was saying, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, and like personal greetings in the marketplaces, and seats of honor in the synagogues, and places of honor at banquets who devour widows' houses, and for appearances' sake offer long prayers. These will receive all the more condemnation. And Jesus sat down opposite the treasury, and began watching how the people were putting money into the treasury, and many rich people were putting in large amounts. And a poor widow came and put in two lepta coins, which amount to a quadrants. Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributors to the treasury. For they all put in out of their surplus, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she owned, all she had to live on. As he was going out of the temple, one of his disciples asterisk said to him, Teacher, look! What wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings! And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew were questioning him privately. Tell us, when will these things come about, and what will be the sign when all these things are going to be fulfilled? 5 And Jesus began to say to them, See to it that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name, saying, 
I am he, and they will mislead many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed, those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, there will be earthquakes in various places, there will also be famines. These things are only the beginning of birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will hand you over to the courts, and you will be flogged in the synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake, as a testimony to them. 10 And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. And when they arrest you and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given you at that time, for you are not the one speaking, but it is the Holy Spirit. And brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by everyone because of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. Now when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be, let the reader understand, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the housetop must not go down, nor go in to get anything out of his house. And whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. But woe to those women who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Moreover, pray that it will not happen in winter. For those days will be such a time of tribulation as has not occurred since the beginning of the creation which God created until now, and never will again. And if the Lord had not shortened those days, no life would have been saved, but for the sake of the elect, whom he chose, he shortened the days. And then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or, Look, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise, and will provide signs and wonders, in order to mislead, if possible, the elect. But beware, I have told you everything in advance. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give ITS light. And the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers that are in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send forth the angels, and will gather together his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Now learn the parable from the fig tree, as soon as its branch has become tender and sprouts its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you too, when you see these things happening, recognize that he is near, right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Watch out, stay alert, for you do not know when the appointed time is. It is like a man away on a journey, who upon leaving his house and putting his slaves in charge, assigning to each one his task, also commanded the doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening, at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning so that he does not come suddenly and find you asleep. What I say to you I say to all, stay alert. Now the Passover and festival of unleavened bread were two days away, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him covertly and kill him. For they were saying, not during the festival, otherwise there will be a riot of the people. While he was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, he was reclining at the table, and a woman came with an alabaster vial of very expensive perfume of pure nard. She broke the vial and poured the perfume over his head. 
But there were some indignantly remarking to one another, why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume could have been sold for over 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they were scolding her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a good deed for me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good to them, but you do not always have me. She has done what she could, she has anointed my body beforehand for the burial. Truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the entire world, what this woman has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. They were delighted when they heard this, and promised to give him money. And he began seeking how to betray him at an opportune time. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was being sacrificed, his disciples asterisk said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? 13 And he asterisk sent two of his disciples and asterisk said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you, follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he himself will show you a large upstairs room furnished and ready, prepare for us there. The disciples left and came to the city, and found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening he asterisk came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be grieved and to say to him one by one, Surely not I. But he said to them, it is one of the twelve, the one who dips bread with me in the bowl. For the Son of Man is going away just as it is written about him, but woe to that man be whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. While they were eating, he took some bread, and after a blessing he broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is being poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again, until that day when I drink it, new, in the kingdom of God. And after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus asterisk said to them, You will all fall away, because it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, Even if they all fall away, yet I will not. And Jesus asterisk said to him, Truly I say to you, that this very night, before a rooster crows twice, you yourself will deny me three times. But Peter repeatedly said insistently, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all were saying the same thing as well. They asterisk came to a place named Gethsemane, and he asterisk said to his disciples, Sit here until I have prayed. And he asterisk took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be very distressed and troubled. And he asterisk said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, to the point of death, remain here and keep watch. And he went a little beyond them, and fell to the ground and began praying that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. And he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you, remove this cup from me yet not what I will, but what you will. And he asterisk came and asterisk found them sleeping, and asterisk said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? 
Keep watching and praying, so that you will not come into temptation, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to say in reply to him. And he asterisk came the third time, and asterisk said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? That is enough. The hour has come, behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's go, behold, the one who is betraying me is near. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, asterisk came up, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who were from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now he who was betraying him had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one, arrest him and lead him away under guard. And after coming, Judas immediately went to him and asterisk said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword, and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as you would against a man inciting a revolt? Every day I was with you within the temple grounds teaching, and you did not arrest me, but this has taken place so that the scriptures will be fulfilled. And his disciples all left him and fled. A young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen sheet over his naked body, and they asterisk seized him. But he pulled free of the linen sheet and escaped naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes asterisk gathered together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the officers and warming himself at the fire. Fifty-five now the chief priests and the entire council were trying to obtain testimony against Jesus to put him to death, and they were not finding any. For many people were giving false testimony against him, and so their testimonies were not consistent. And then some stood up and began giving false testimony against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that was made by hands, and in three days I will build another, made without hands. And not even in this respect was their testimony consistent. And then the high priest stood up and came forward and questioned Jesus, saying, Do you not offer any answer for what these men are testifying against you? But he kept silent and did not offer any answer. Again the high priest was questioning him, and Asterisk said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Tearing his clothes, the high priest Asterisk said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy, how does it seem to you? And they all condemned him as deserving of death. And some began to spit on him, and to blindfold him, and to beat him with their fists and say to him, Prophesy. Then the officers took custody of him and slapped him in the face. And while Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the slave women of the high priest Asterisk came, sixty-seven and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and Asterisk said, you were with Jesus the Nazarene as well. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. And he went out onto the porch. The slave woman saw him, and began once more to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while the bystanders were again saying to Peter, You really are one of them for you are a Galilean as well. But he began to curse himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. 
72 and immediately a rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had made the remark to him, Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he hurried on and began to weep. Early in the morning the chief priests with the elders, scribes, and the entire council immediately held a consultation, and they bound Jesus and led him away, and turned him over to Pilate. Two Pilate questioned him, So you are the king of the Jews? And he answered him, It is as you say. And the chief priests started accusing him of many things. But Pilate questioned him again, saying, Do you offer nothing in answer? See how many charges they are bringing against you. 5. But Jesus said nothing further in answer, so Pilate was amazed. Now at the Passover feast he used to release for them any one prisoner whom they requested. 7. And the one named Barabbas had been imprisoned with the rebels who had committed murder in the revolt. And the crowd went up and began asking Pilate to do as he had been accustomed to do for them. Pilate answered them, saying, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? 10 For he was aware that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to ask him to release Barabbas for them instead. And responding again, Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. But Pilate said to them, Why? what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. Intent on satisfying the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after having Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. Now the soldiers took him away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and they asterisk called together the whole Roman cohort. And they asterisk dressed him in purple, and after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they repeatedly beat his head with a reed and spit on him, and kneeling, they bowed down before him. And after they had mocked him, they took the purple cloak off him and put his own garments on him. And they asterisk led him out to crucify him. And they asterisk compelled a passerby coming from the country, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Then they asterisk brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated, place of a skull. And they tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they asterisk crucified him, and asterisk divided up his garments among themselves casting lots for them to decide what each man would take. Now it was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they asterisk crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by were hurling abuse at him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. In the same way the chief priests also, along with the scribes, were mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let this Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him were also insulting him. When the sixth hour came, darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lima Sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when some of the bystanders heard him, they began saying, Look, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave him a drink, saying, 
let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. But Jesus let out a loud cry, and died. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who was standing right in front of him, saw that he died in this way, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Now there were also some women watching from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Less and Hoses, and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they used to follow him and serve him, and there were many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had already come, since it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea came, a prominent member of the council, who was himself also waiting for the kingdom of God, and he gathered up courage and went in before Pilate, and asked for the body of Jesus. Now Pilate wondered if he was dead by this time, and summoning the centurion, he questioned him as to whether he was already dead. And after learning this from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Joseph bought a linen cloth, took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb which had been cut out in the rock, and he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Hoses were watching to see where he was laid. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might come and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, the asterisk came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb for us? And looking up, the asterisk noticed that the stone had been rolled away, for it was extremely large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. But he asterisk said to them, Do not be amazed, you are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen, he is not here, see, here is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, there you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had gripped them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now after he had risen early on the first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him, while they were mourning and weeping. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they refused to believe it. Now after that, he appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking along on their way to the country. And they went away and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them, either. Later he appeared to the eleven disciples themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he reprimanded them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen from the dead. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. The one who has believed and has been baptized will be saved, but the one who has not believed will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who have believed, in my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them, and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. And they promptly reported all these instructions to Peter and his companions. And after that, Jesus himself also sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation.